Not landing at your intended spot is somewhat unique to backcountry operations. It is fairly common to have to do multiple approaches or bulk landings when operating in short, rough, or confined areas. While we have all learned go-arounds and bulk landings in primary training, the average general aviation pilot doesn't often exercise these skills on the typical longer GA runway. However, in the backcountry there are several varieties of these flight regime changing maneuvers. It is not a lack of skill, but rather abundance of judgment and experience that often leads us to not land where we intended. These maneuvers can basically be broken down into two categories. Intentional passes used to build a plan for the ultimate arrival, and the intended but unsuccessful approach and landing attempts that are the result of a changing environment, imprecise planning, or just a crappy landing. I am not ashamed to say that the marginalized environments that we operate in, I am frequently guilty of all the above. I believe being comfortable not landing at your intended spot and knowing when to call it is just as important as the skills laid out in our previous videos. I break these bulk arrivals down into four different categories. I use the aborted approach for no go around strips. I use the intentional bulk landing for assessing landing areas. A standard go-around is used for when things just aren't working out. And the unintentional bulk landing is used anytime after the flare is initiated and unwanted results happen. There are a few common traits to these four distinct different maneuvers. A high and mid-level reconnaissance has already been performed. Your surroundings at this point are well known and there is a plan for each approach. The setups are identical to landing. We use the same configurations and attitudes. We don't stray from this, as it can be misleading when you actually set up to land. Very importantly, once the decision has been made to not land, I don't land. And similarly, once the decision has been made to abort, I never attempt to salvage the landing. Very importantly, the primary goal is to stabilize the aircraft after the abort and let it fly away. Don't force it up and into a stall. The aborted approach is used at no go around strips and locations. Like a decision altitude on an instrument approach, this is a point where a safe departure path is assured. These are more common in mountainous areas where geographic limitations may prevent a go around at typical points on the approach. However, power lines and other obstacles can make these possible anywhere. What makes these different from a go around or balk landing is that a safer bolt point is fairly far away from the desired touchdown point. Furthermore, the departure path is often not straight out, but more of a quick course change or non-standard climb out. The procedure is performed by going from a low energy high descent rate to a VX type climb in just a few seconds. This is accomplished by increasing the throttle and letting the aircraft accelerate. Only then, once you're stabilized, do you initiate a climb and reduce flaps. The intentional bulk landing, or what we call the backcountry touch and go, is used for evaluating surface conditions and takeoff considerations. This is basically a standard touch and go with a few key differences. Set up like a normal landing, slow, steep, and stable. The flare should be normal. The only difference is the amount of weight you allow on the wheels. In a tailwheel, this means a wheelie rollout. In a trike, it would be keeping the nose off the ground. This allows you to sniff the surface conditions without committing your suspension to do its job. The slower you go, the more you feel the surface condition. Going around is easy from these configurations. Simply apply power and milk the plane into ground effect. Let the aircraft accelerate and stabilize before changing configuration or initiating a climb. The standard go around is pretty straightforward. The challenge is having the judgment to initiate it. I use go arounds fairly liberally. If things aren't perfect in the shorter environments, I don't hesitate to give it another shot. 
This can happen far out or just before the flare. In either way, I power it up quickly and only after the aircraft is stabilized do I climb and then reduce flaps. The unintended bulk landing is basically anything after the flare is initiated. In our previous videos, we discuss how a flare is really just a matter of arresting your vertical energy. Once a flare is initiated, you're at a fairly critical state. If it isn't properly timed or you end up cattywampus for any reason, you must not hesitate to give it the onion. I stab the throttle and wait for the aircraft to build energy. Trying to stay in ground effect makes this much more efficient. Only after flying speed is assured do I transition to a climb configuration. It is important to note that in our high altitude environments, the mixture has to be set right to avoid hesitation. Having the judgment to exercise these maneuvers is paramount. The actual stick and rudder skill is relatively minimal comparatively, but being able to reverse your plane's flight regime is absolutely necessary when operating in the backcountry.